Hi there folks, welcome to Panda Life Gaming. I'm your host Cody, and today we are getting back into Shadows Over Loathing. Let's get into it. Let, let's, let's, let's get into it. Uh, last time we got this cool fedora, uncursed it, all our belongings are uh, caught on fire, uh, and we got a goblin friend. We found out our uncle uh, is some kind of weird magic item purveyor. Um, morning, Panda. How'd you sleep? Wait, why are you still wearing those wet clothes? All my other clothes burned up in a freak luggage fire. Ah, jeez, that's weird and unfortunate. You seem less surprised by it than I would expect. We've gotten, uh, we've gotten accustomed to weird and unfortunate stuff happening around here. You can pick out some clothes from the front, uh, the French, from the shop out front. Oh, and we're already at I Can't Read. Um, if you don't mind looking like somebody's dusty old grandpa. Uh, I'll be right, I'll be alright. Thanks anyway, I want to look like dusty grandpa. Um, well, once you've gotten the sleep out of your eyes, I've got another mission for you. Another cursed thing. Yeah, I've had my eyes on it for a while, but it keeps moving around. Most, uh, mostly the readings put it at a local speakeasy. Uh, at the back uh, of an alley at the other end of the block. The artifact isn't there right now, but that's where I'd start looking. Maybe you can pick up some clues? Okay, what am I looking for? It appears to be a watch of some kind. A pocket watch, maybe a wrist watch, I can't be certain. A watch in the speakeasy in the alley. Got it. Anything else? Uh, you'll need to find the password for the speakeasy. It's fiddles It's fiddlesticks. You just gave me the password. Oh, you'll need the password. Oh, I'm dumb. Uh, also, let me give you this to-do list. It's enchanted to always show whatever's written on the chalkboard here. Pretty neat trick. Here's some meat for expenses, too. The army surplus, uh... Next door should have anything you need in case things get rough. They will. They always do. I'm haunted. Um, let's see. Let's see. I need I need tuna for the cats. Calliope. C Calliope. What's up, Charles Wallace? Hey, good to see you up. We've had quite a morning already. See that bookshelf over there? Just brought it in. It's a real rare find, Panda came from a 17th century cargo ship, the Mustflower. Wow, that's quite a provenance for a bookshelf. Yeah, it was the ship's wheel. The captain brought the Mustflower out of dock, couldn't steer, drove into a starfish, sank the whole whole thing sank instantly. Any, anyways, anything I can help you with? Drove it into a starfish? What? Uh, nothing right now, Charles. Uh, okay. Uh, what's up, Jessica? Anything I can do for you? Um. Let's see. Ah, the lizard. I should write a chapter one. Welcome to Ocean City. Okay. But yeah, we have, uh, Gabby as our, our, our bud. Let's go to the surplus store. Dangling bags for army stuff. Nearly uh, dozens of nearly identical books about nearly identical identical rifles, ordnance <clears throat> for a civilian shelf. We have logins sort of thing. Okay, what's up? Prior stands behind the counter. Hi there, my name is Panda. Hello, fellow war enthusiast. I'm Herschel. Herschel Wood. Which I hate war. Wouldn't say I'm an enthusiast. I'm ambivalent about war. Oh, yeah, sure. War's okay. <laughs> um, let's go with I'm ambivalent about war. I'm ambivalent about war. Virtual's expression doesn't change. Can I interest you in any fine historical memorabilia? It's about the dubious. What's the story with those grenades? Oh, they're probably fine. Why doesn't the box say fine grenades, then? He looks at the grenades, then at you. Say, how would you like to do some field research? S side quest. Sure, why not? He hands you a bunch of grenades. You got an item, dubious cola war grenades. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, hmm. Okay, that's fine. J 
just try him out next time you, you get in a fight. And when you're all done, come back and let me know how it went. Um, okay. See what's for sale. Gas mask. The haversack. Ooh. Ooh. Bad for you, despite what the radio advertisements say. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Uh, there's supposed to be sardines. Yes. I think this is what I need, right? For the cat. Bye, Sardine. So it just occurred to me. Cola Wars. Cold War. I I think I think that's that's the reference here. But also, this Cola Wars era armor manual uh, ensured that even the soldiers whose entire job it was to feed people were still able to inflict casualties. Yeah, it sounds like the army. Um, we're gonna buy this, because I want Parmesan missile. Fuck yeah. Uh, start your search for- okay, wait, close. Can I read that right now? Read! Uh, you read- I can pour over the notes for 100 XP? Wait. Uh, you read the book and learn an efficient, battle-tested method for hurting people with cheese. Parmesan missile. The harder the cheese, the more damaging the projectile. Okay. There's some notes scrawled in the margin uh, by some former owner of the book. They're messy, but you could you could read them. You put some effort into it. If you do, Parmesan missile will do two additional damage. I can't pour over the notes. Why not? Maybe I need something special for that. I don't know. Oh yeah, I have an overdue library book. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I have no pants, no ring, no shoes, and a turtle. Love it. Uh, let's see. So now I have Parmesan Missile. Uh, do I have any XP? You have 10. Oops. Or oof, rather. Okay. Um, do, do, do. What do I want? Oh, cat. Do, 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 do. Cat, 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 cat. Feed her. You open the can of sardines. Calliope uh, immediately wakes up, devours the entire can, and then purrs as she licks the remaining oil from your fingers. Looks like you made a friend. New cat unlocked. Uh, you can now pet Calliope to receive a boon. Pet her now. Uh, you give her a nice scratching, and she purrs as she goes back to sleep. Calliope's boon. Plus one physical armor. Uh, reinforce you against the slings and arrows and mice and birds of the world. Lovely. This, this is, okay, so where do I see my boon? Character sheet? Effects? Yes. So I can get a random, like, there's so many different little add-ons you can get, and I love it. Uh, do, 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 do. Now, I believe there was a, a set of dates that I was given. I want to say it was in the... Ah, yes. Uh, you found something interesting. Frisco Frights this morning, uh, 512 Pacific Standard Time. The city of Frisco was rocked by a massive earthquake, the magnitude of which the science has not yet agreed upon a method of measuring. The initial death toll was estimated as many as 500, though that number will certainly increase due to fires currently raging across the city. There have also been strange scattered reports from witnesses who claim to have observed unusual phenomena such as beams of black light, subsonic laughter, and soul-rending nightmare, soul nightmares. Though our editors wish to point out that Frisconians are known for their fondness of psychedelic intoxicants. Um, you're really starting to enjoy doing this kind of research. You got a perk news hound, you gain extra XP for learning new things from the newspaper archive. Well, that's ominous. Can I learn new things? New things? New things? New things? New things? New things? No, I want more XP. Give it all to me. Uh, wait. What happens if I look into the crystal ball? Okay. Same stuff as before. Oop. I can go into the bank. It, in the daylight, it's clear the bank has been closed for some time. The door to the bank is fashioned with three locks. That's the maximum possible level of security. Uh... 
what about four locks? In 1928, four lock systems are still dismissed as unachievable liberal fantasy. Look under the welcome mat. Not a, ba not a bad idea, but if you're going to lift the welcome mat, you need to know what you're looking for first. Do I? How much stuff could be under a welcome mat? Just a key to the bank's front door. As it turns out, security uh, at this place is inconsistent. Use the key. Doors locks are molded onto the monstrous mugs of great hounds of the great hounds of Cerberus, three-headed guardian of the underworld's banking sector. Huh? <laughs> Each of the three heads has a name: uh, Phylax, Methipon, and Sneaky Pete. Uh, and a keyhole deep in its maw. Unlock Phylax. Okay. Head Phylax lets the key inside easily enough, but offers up incredible resistance when you try to turn it. Hercules would have used up all 12 labors just to get this thing going. Uh, unlock Meth... Meth... Yeah. That's strange. Key turns over and over in the lock, but nothing happens. Uh, something sneaky about this, Pete. Alright. I thought I hit... Oh, no, I didn't. A uh, key fits in the hole, so okay, I need different stats. Okay, what was my guy just doing? Okay, I guess we're going down the alley, maybe? Uh, this alley is where Jessica said the speakeasy was. Check it out. You weave between various trash cans, piles of uncanned trash. Until okay, you reach a serious looking door. Let's knock. Little, side, uh, little panel slides open near the top of the door and narrow eyes regard you through it. Passwood. Fiddlesticks. I'm pretty sure it was fiddlesticks. Okay. Come on in. But you never you, but you better not be a proby. Not Scout Sonner. Uh I don't even know what a proby is. Speak easy, friend. I'm about it. Uh, a milky-eyed sot turns his head towards you and smiles. I'll buy him a drink. After a few moments uh, and a few sips, he clears his throat and speaks. Distilled to its essence, a lake is just a valley abandoned. I see. I think I see. I am a drink. Uh... Those who can read them, the signs are here, right here in this very room. Leave him to his milkiness. I don't want to keep buying him drinks. Spittoon! This spittoon has been placed at a really challenging height. Maybe you can ask the bartender about it some other time. I want to ask the bartender about it right fucking now. Extremely handsome man. Behind the bar, shaking up a storm. I'd like to point out. We're both extremely handsome. As you approach, uh, he looks at you as you approach, but doesn't stop shaking. Hello. He grins. Hello, baby. Welcome to all of this place. My name's Panda. Whatever you say, baby. Are you Oliver? Oh, heck no. I'm Fancy Dan the Cocktail Man. Pleased to meet you, Dan. Hey. Uh, how do you happen to know... Do you happen to know what time it is? Perhaps because you have a watch on you? Sorry, baby. The only one around here who carries a pocket watch is the owner, Oliver Gluck. He left about an hour ago to pick up our latest shipment of hooch. From who? Uh, from whom, baby? Before I was Fancy Dan the Cocktail Man, I was Fancy Dan the English Teacher. Sorry. From whom? From the mob guys we always get it from. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whence is the hooch coming? Fancy Dan smiles. The old refrigerator factory. I see. How do I get there? Dan grabs a cocktail napkin and hands it to you. Uh, thanks. Oh, <laughs> wrong napkin. Yeah. He takes the napkin back and grabs a different one with a couple of icons scrawled on it. Take the napkin. Napkin. Uh, you got an item, Ocean City napkin map. As you take a napkin, uh, Dan points at one of the icons on it. 
We're here behind Murray's store on, oh, we're here behind Murray's store on Puckett Street. So if you go out the alley and then head straight for the edge of the napkin, you can't miss the factory. You have a map of the area. You can open it by clicking uh, on the map icon on top right or hitting M. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Don't mention it, baby. Want a drink for the road? First one's on the house. Oh, free drink. Fuck yeah. What do you have to drink around here? Beer. I'll have a beer then. Excellent choice. Keep things simple. Uh, you drink the beer you've had. Oh, I didn't mean to drink it right away. You've had better beer, but you've definitely had worse beer. Uh, leave? Wait, no, I want to ask about the spittoon. Order a drink. Never mind. Arr. Oh, here we go. Hey, Dan. Your spittoon is kind of inconvenient. Nah, nah, baby. That spittoon isn't for spitting in. That's gone out of style uh, now that mass-produced cigarettes are readily available anyway. No, that's a bona fide historical artifact. What? Really? That's right. Belong to a famous adventurer from Frisco just before the turn of the century. Yes, that's a character from West of Loathing. Really? Who? Well, nobody's exactly sure. A lot of people think it belonged to... No, you fucking didn't. Mumpler Fumperdink is the name of Markiplier's character from West of Loathing when he played. I can't even. <laughs> That's fantastic. A lot of people think it belonged to Mumpler Fumperdink. I can't do that in an accent. It's a strong theory. Because if there's one thing we know about that cat, it's that he loves Spittoon, that he did. But other people uh, say it belonged to a fellow by the name of Thern Thernlian. I don't know who that is. Uh, and a whole lot of other people claimed it belonged to a whole lot of other people. I think it belonged to a cat named Panda. Um, but there's one thing we do know for sure about this Spittoon, whoever it was. He didn't use it for spitting into. They wore it as a hat. What? Oh, gross. <laughs> right. They sure got into some weird stuff back then. No kidding. That's fantastic. I love that reference. Thank you. <clears throat> Wait, aren't those the fishermen from the watchful eye, uh, watchful eye basement? You're so used to not thinking about where things go when you put them in a tube. <laughs> Say hello. Oop. Hey, remember me from the tube? Beat it, bud. We're off the clock. Um, I didn't realize you could talk. I could talk about anything you like. Dickens, Flaubert, the Bronx. Uh, what can you tell me about Dickens? I think his books are too long. What can you tell me about Flaubert? I think his books are too long. What can you tell me about the Bronx? I, I'm probably butchering this. I think the books are too long. What books are the right length? None. Okay, this was helpful. Thank you. Uh, these, these people are obviously on a first date and you shouldn't bother them. Are they obviously on a first date? What is this? Some weird... I've seen these wim s wimbles? Symbols somewhere else. Uh, a weirdly res uh, it's weirdly responsible of this illegal poison dispensary to have a first aid kit. See if it's in there. Gauze pads and charcoal briquette? There's a door here. Won't budge. Must be barred shut from the other side. Okay. Alright. Cool. Neato burrito. What do I got? I'm a news hound. Oh, I knew that already. Um, well, that was intriguing. So can I leave now? Walk somewhere else? Sure. Now we can go to the, the only place we can go to. Ooh, let's do a wander. A hobo nods pleasantly as you pass. Tips his battered hat at you. Oh, there's a hobo achievement. I don't know how to get it, but I know there is one. 
Um, howdy, feller. My name's Huckleberry Nelson. There, there's gonna be a lot of similar voices here. I haven't been able to find work in this town. Any chance you'd spare five meat so I can buy some caviar? Uh, I'd be real grateful. Caviar? Not just, say, a sandwich. Well, aim high, I figure. I don't know what I'd call five... I don't know what I'd call five meat caviar, but it isn't aiming high. There you go. Thanks a heap, filler. You're a real good egg. Uh, no problem. I'll just go to the fridge factory. Oh, another hobo. Uh, a bedraggled hobo shovels up to you with his hat in his hands. Excuse me, mister. Don't mean to trouble you. My name's Paco Bush. And I, and I was wondering if you might have any meat you could spare. Just four meat for a cup of joe to warm these old bones. Well, I... Wait... What's in the sack you're holding up? Old bones, like I said. <laughs> sure, here you go. Thank you kindly, mister. You're a real saint. So you are. Uh, no problem, goodbye. Well then. Hello, gents. This toll booth was obviously stolen and dragged here. Obviously. Um, okay. These folks look like they're here for some serious business. Try to make a deal. Whoa there, buddy. This is a private party. Club members only. Yeah, like you said, club members only. What kind of club is it? The fraternal order of people who bribed us more than we're earning as gate guards. <laughs> Come on. Fub pub egg? I've never heard of it. How do I join? What are you, thick? I'd have... I'd have thought it was obvious, pal. You give us meat. How much? 500. Yeah, 500 meat. Clancy, I told you to knock it off with the repeating business. Hmm. I must just come up with that kind of meat. Ha! You could try panhandling with the other bums in gold... Gold... Wait, park. What's that? It was north and west of here. You can't miss it. Yeah, you can't miss it. For the love of Mike, Clancy, dry up. <laughs> this is fun. I could, or I could go beat them. Let's go check out the park real quick. So, but, God damn it. <laughs> you can hear a hobo who's sauntering down the sidewalk with, with a bindle over his shoulder, whistling a jaunty tune. Oh, hey there, fella. Aren't you Panda? I'm Stevie Shanter. Sh Shatner? Shatner. Uh, hi. How do you know my name? Oh, we hobos are a tightly knit com little community. When someone's been helping us out, word gets around. Well, that's nice. A little creepy, but nice on balance. Uh, why don't you come to our camp? We'll be glad to have you. Where is it? Okay. Uh, well, you just head down 12th Street till you see the lot where the old hardware store uh, used to be. And then you take a... You know what? It'll be simple for fire market on your map for you. Yes, please. Uh, he takes out a pencil stub and marks a cluster of little boxes on your map. Come by any old time. Ja! Yeah. Bid him adieu. Okay, so instead of being here, let's actually go to the hobo camp. Okay. Uh, as you're walking, Gabby strikes up conversation. So, you are new to Ocean City? Your first time at it? I... I think we already established that it wasn't, actually. Yeah, that's right. Er, that's right, yeah. What thinks have you got of it? Well, to be honest with you, it seems a little run down. Yes, Gabby understands you. It was much nicer before an economy happened. Lots of people, very excitement. Oh, oh, have you seen the boardwalk yet? It's like a cat wearing pajamas. What? It has games there and a fortune teller. That does sound like a uh, cat wearing pajamas. Um, we'll check it out later. No, I, I, I... Oh, yeah. Cryptography. Somebody. Uh, this is a hobo lady, lady that you haven't met yet. Hello. Hello there. Well, hello there, dearie. I don't believe we've been introduced. I'm Veronica. Hi, I'm Banda. 
Can I offer you a cup of tea? It's homegrown, so to speak. You found tea leaves around here? Just about any leaves can be tea leaves with the right attitude. I'm fine. Thank you, though. I like your hat. Why, thank you. I grew it myself. The flowers, the whole thing. I'm trying to grow uh, some socks as well, but they're much trickier. I can imagine. Now, I might know about that. I'm a cryptobiologist or something. Uh, this hobo is wearing a handmade tinfoil crown. Lovely. Hello there, you must be the hobo king. The crown gave it away, I presume. Yep. Well, you are absolutely correct. This is just a more stuck-up version of my own accent. I am the Hobo King, though to foster a more familiar air, I permit my subjects to call me Johnny. Nice to meet you, Johnny. I'm Panda. What can I do for you, Panda? I've got a question. Where are you from? Hoboken. <laughs> of course you are. Leave. Lovely. Hey, don't touch the telephone. Royal use only. This phone isn't connected to anything. Don't let it hear you say that. Okay. I'm about it. Uh, this hobo is flipping through a worn book, occasionally stopping to check the strange machine next to him, and pets some notes in the margins. Talk to him. Hi there! Hmm? Oh, hello. You must be new here. I don't think I've seen you around before. Yes, my name's Banda. Pleased to meet you. I'm Letters McCabe. Is there anything I can assist you with? Why do they call you Letters? I'm an expert in... Micro cryptography, aka hobo code. Are you familiar with it? Mm, nope. What's that? System of uh, pictographic elements that can be written unobtrusively on walls. Oh, or carved in a fence post, etc. They're traditionally used by hobos to leave messages for other hobos to mark a house where occupants are charitable, for instance, or to warn of a vicious guard dog. That sort of thing. I'm working on expanding the system for more general communications purposes. That's pretty interesting. Is there anything else? Uh, is there anything I can assist you with? What's the book you're reading? Uh, this is a hobo code manual. I can teach you the basics if you'd like. Sure, that sounds useful. Hobo literacy. You're a level one student of the hobo alphabet. You spend uh, 10 minutes or so going over the basics of uh, hobo code with letters. He teaches you some of the most common glyphs. If you'd like to know more, just ask any of the homos you meet. They're honor bound to assist new learners. That's the hobo, hobo code code. Hobo hobo code code. God damn it. Hey, thanks. Uh, is there anything I can assist you with? Uh, what's with all the stuff in this room? Stuff is a little overbroad for a topic uh, of a topic for conversation. Feel free to point out any particular object you want to ask me about. Them. I'm happy to be informative. Uh, okay, cool. What's this? That. That's just a radio. Oh, right. Uh, what's this machine you're working on? This is an old naval radio encryption encryptionograph from the Cold Wars. I'm trying to modify it to work with Hobo Code. That sounds on. Yes, it wasn't designed to handle pictographic writing systems. That's for certain. But if we can get it to work, it should be very secure. Interesting. Uh. Hi, Ladders. What's with this old shoe box? Old shoes. You're welcome to them. Take. Uh, you pick up the box, you can barely lift it. Jeez, what kind of shoes are these? Hand-me-down boots. They've been passed from hobo to hobo for generations. Probably about 50 pounds of metal reinforcement on them by now. What? Weigh your feet down. Excellent. Neat. Let's, let's, are they, are they on? No, they need to be on. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! 
it seems to only be one kind of silly walk, but I've got the silly walk. Uh... Hey, letters, what's the deal with this? It's a ham radio. What's it for? We're saying this stuff about ham. Gotcha. Uh, what's this? Uh, it's a teletype machine that we salvage when they shut down one of the local post office branches for cutbacks. We patch in a local telegraph network so we can communicate with stuff, uh, with some of the over other hobo communities. Some heavy duty equipment. Um, well, yes, I'm not at liberty to discuss it in detail, you understand, but secure lines of communication are going to be quite important if Jai's plans are to come to fruition. Now I'm intrigued! Sorry, you'll have to ask about it yourself. Ah, uh, very well. Uh, all my notes on the Hobo Code, more notes on codes and languages in general, as well as my studies on radio, telemetry, te te tele telegraphy, tele te fuck, uh, and telephony. Uh, I think my aunt's recipe book is in there somewhere, too. Uh, did you write all of these in code? I can't make out a single word. Um, no, that's just my handwriting. I see. Uh, what's with this poster? There's some general pr purpose hobo code glyphs I'm working on. It's a bunch of them that are blacked out, though. Oh, yes, they're still experimental, so I decided it would be wisest to take some precautions. Ah, oh, well. Uh, manuals for different types of codes and ciphers. Can't, no, uh, Buford tre tre treatises on several uh, variations of Colin, da -da 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 -da, uh, Mormon jigsaw, I mean German mix-up codes, so on. Uh, interesting. A few books on old pictographic language languages in there, too. Fascinating stuff. That's all great to me. Oh, King. What can I do for you, Panda? Uh, Lada says you're working on some kind of secret plan. Oh, here to hear. You wouldn't say what it was, though. Certainly not. That information is mine alone to divulge. So, will you divulge? You're pra practically a stranger here. I apologize, but I cannot op jeopardize operational security. Shucks. Can you teach me some hobo code? Uh, what? Hmm. I need more mysticality and a perk. Okay. Can you teach me some hobo code? Nice. Certainly, dear. In fact, I think I still have my notes from when I was learning it myself. Uh, fantastic. Uh... How does that work exactly? Effects? Hobo literacy. You're a level two student. Uh, it's Howie the Hobo. You met in that box car that, uh, last night. Hey there, Howie. How's it going? Well, hey, if it, uh, well, hey, if it is Manda, I nice see you again. Looks like that rumor you, you heard about a hobo camp turned out to be on the level. Oh, sure. The whole hobo code is pretty trustworthy, as a general rule. You're pretty good on that harmonica, Howie. Thanks. You want to know my secret? Sure. I have only one hobby, and all the time in the world to practice it. Haha. -ha. Uh, speaking of hobo code, can you teach me any? Oh, uh, old Lair's teaching you the lingo, eh? Well, sure, I still owe you one for dealing with the railroad bull, now that I think of it. Hug her down here, and I'll show you what I know. Nice. That grub. Shut eye. Oh, I shouldn't mess around here. You'll uh, wake up people. Fine. My heavy shoes. Uh, this guy's in a state of washboard induced ecstasy. Talk to him. Uh, wow, you're really going to town on that washboard. Yep, I love the fast staccato. Staccato rhythm it makes. It's pretty good. I bet someday there will be fancy electrical machines to do it really good. Till then, though. Folks call me Washi, by the way. Hi, Washi. I'm Banda. Uh, how about code, please? Sure. I know the word washboard. 
And uh, some words that kind of describe the sounds a washboard makes. They aren't real useful as actual words. Teaches you them anyway. Thanks. Uh, okay. And the grub cart. Hi there, I'm Panda. They call me 52 Teeth Thompson. Or just 52 for short. Uh huh. Is that because of, of the 52 white, tea, uh, white keys on the piano? Nope. Ask about the piano. Oh, it's lucky that they happen to find a piano for the camp. Oh, I brought this baby with me. On foot? How? Well, it took a few trips. Ask about the hobo code. Uh, this one means arpeggio. These two pointy ones are crescendo and deep. Uh, decrescendo and uh, here's a treble clef thanks lovely it is supply chain difficulty as the grub car is currently BYOG condiments are still available to camp residents lovely <clears throat> well then I believe this is where we're going blah, 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 where we're going to call this episode uh, in the next one, we'll explore the park and the boardwalk and maybe the fridge factory. We'll see. I I'd like to explore other things before I get to the, uh, the story. I don't know why I'm talking like this. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more content just like it. But I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.